Tonight, breaking news. Tens of thousands of cell phones in the U.S. stop working. The FBI on this tonight and what we know so far. Also breaking as we come on tonight, the first U.S. attempt to land on the moon in 50 years. Reports coming in now of unexpected issues. Will they pull this off? And the sad news on well-known TV host Wendy Williams tonight. First this evening, the FBI Homeland Security investigating why tens of thousands of AT&T customers lost cell phone service for hours. Other carriers tonight explaining why their users were affected too. Authorities in some places telling users if you have an emergency, call on a landline. But what about the many Americans who no longer have landlines? And was this a warning of what could happen if the threat is more serious? Rebecca Jarvis with late reporting. President Biden today meeting with Alexei Navalny's wife and daughter and what Biden called Vladimir Putin overnight that made news. And tonight here, the video message from Navalny's mother, what she claims Russia told her, James Longman overseas. Tonight, the fallout after that decision declaring frozen embryos are people by Alabama's highest court. Tonight, several hospitals and clinics halting IVF. Vice President Harris today saying this is because of Donald Trump and his picks for the Supreme Court overturning Roe, Elizabeth Schulze in Alabama. Tonight, after Republicans torpedoed that bipartisan border security deal, President Biden signaling he will take action on the southern border on his own. Matt Gutman on the border tonight. This evening, a U.S. Navy sailor charged with espionage, what he's accused of giving away. Pierre Thomas reporting. That sad news tonight involving well-known TV host Wendy Williams diagnosed with the same condition affecting Bruce Willis. What kind of dementia is this? Deborah Roberts is here. The new storm moving into the northeast tonight. Snow and rain and what's coming right behind it. And more on the breaking news on this first U.S. mission to the moon. It was supposed to land just moments ago and the news just coming in. It has just landed. From ABC News World Headquarters in New York, this is World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. We have several breaking stories. This historic landing on the moon just moments ago, we have learned that the unmanned landing was a success. Gio Benitez is standing by on this. But first, the breaking developments at this hour on this massive outage today. Cell phones across this country, tens of thousands of AT&T customers, their phones not working, other carriers affected by this too. Tonight, sources just telling ABC News they now believe it was an AT&T software update that brought the phones down. The outage is rippling across the country. You can see the map there showing the most affected cities, including Los Angeles, Houston, Chicago, and Miami. AT&T tonight saying service has been restored, but for many hours, some users were told, if you have an emergency, call on a landline. But what about the many Americans who no longer have a landline? And authorities are now asking tonight, was this sort of a wake-up call? What if the threat had been worse? Rebecca Jarvis leading us off tonight. Tonight, multiple federal agencies, including the FBI and the FCC, are investigating after AT&T customers in major cities all over the country, from L.A. to Dallas to Chicago, lost cell service. I woke up around 3 o'clock and I checked my phone and it said SOS only. The outage affected emergency services in multiple states, with callers having problems getting through to 911. San Francisco's fire department telling callers having issues to use a landline. Massachusetts State Police reporting their 911 call centers flooded with calls from people trying to see if 911 works from their cell phone. Please do not do this. It also affected FirstNet, a nationwide network for first responder and police communication. AT&T hasn't said exactly how many of its more than 100 million customers were affected. According to the website Down Detector, which tracks self-reported outages, the numbers peaked around 10 a.m. at more than 70,000. But that's just cases reported directly to the website. Down Detector also reported outages from T-Mobile and Verizon, but both those companies say they're operating normally and blame the reports on failed calls from their customers to AT&T users. So let's get right to Rebecca Jarvis with us tonight. Rebecca, sources telling us that this was a software update that malfunctioned, affecting tens of thousands, perhaps even more. And all of these concerns today, because people were told to use landlines uh, if there's an emergency, concerns that this could have been far worse in this country, particularly because so many people don't even have a landline anymore. 
That's right, David. And far worse, potentially, if it had been a cyber attack or something more malicious. It was also a reminder that in an emergency, most phones like this one have a function where you can use Wi-Fi to make an emergency call and you could use that SOS emergency function to also text in a real emergency. David. All right, Rebecca Jarvis leading us off here tonight. Rebecca, a great reminder. Now to the other breaking story. We're following the first U.S. attempt at landing on the moon in more than 50 years. Just before we came on the air tonight, the attempt, and we have just learned now the landing was a success. Let's get right to ABC's Gio Benitez covering this for us. Gio? That's right, David. Odysseus is officially on the moon. Now, we don't know its condition just yet, but we know it's transmitting that data. This little spacecraft has a big mission. Tonight, that historic touchdown, an American spacecraft landing on the moon for the first time in more than 50 years. Separation confirmed. The lunar lander Odysseus, nicknamed Odie, touching down near the moon's south pole at precisely 624 p.m. I wanted an outstanding effort. I know this was a nail biter, but we are on the, si on the surface and we are transmitting. Mission control erupting in applause. The lander, built by Houston-based Intuitive Machines, now the first private spacecraft ever to land on the moon, carrying instruments that will gather information about the lunar surface ahead of NASA's Artemis mission to the moon in 2026 with humans on board. Americans first landed on the moon on Apollo 11 in 1969. We will be here from now on for what uh, will be uh, truly a historic time. That's one small step for man. The last time, back in 1972, on Apollo 17. Now, Odie's mission sets into motion a new beginning in exploring the moon and the universe. That South Pole, the dark side of the moon, has water and ice, which is critical if we want to use the moon as a home base to one day explore Mars and beyond. The moon has one-sixth the gravity of Earth and no atmosphere. So it's a much easier place to launch deeper into the solar system. It really is the launching pad into human exploration out into deep space. And David, what's really incredible about this is that they actually lost a critical tool to land this spacecraft in the two hours before this landing. And in those two hours here on Earth, they created new software, uploaded it to the spacecraft and made this possible. Now it's transmitting data. David. The mission officially begins. Gio Benitez with the breaking news tonight. Gio, thank you. Next year this evening, President Biden meeting with Alexei Navalny's widow and daughter in San Francisco today, delivering his condolences in person after Navalny's death in a Russian prison in the Arctic. The president calling Navalny a man of incredible courage. And tonight right here, the video message from Navalny's mother, what she claims Russia told her and what President Biden called Putin last night that made news. James Longman oversees tonight. Tonight, President Biden offering his condolences to Alexei Navalny's widow and daughter in San Francisco. He was a man of incredible courage, and it's amazing how his wife and daughter are, are, are emulating that. Biden ready to unveil new sanctions on Russia tomorrow and praising Yulia's resolve. You know, she's going to continue to the fight he had on the way. So we're not letting up. President even going so far as to call Vladimir Putin a crazy SOB at a closed fundraiser yesterday. Also tonight, nearly a week after his death, Navalny's mother says Russian officials took her to a morgue in secret and claims they are now blackmailing her. I'm recording this video because they started threatening me, she says. They say that if I don't agree to a secret funeral, they'll do something with my son's body. A public funeral for Putin's best-known critic could be a major focus for protests. Navalny's death certificate reportedly lists the cause as natural, but his family says they believe he was poisoned. This, as the boyfriend of Russian-American Kasnia Karolina, who was detained in Russia last month, tells ABC News he's just received a letter from her. The one day she'll wake up and she feels so motivated and so inspired and just so positive that she will see me soon. And then one day she'll wake up and she says, Chris, I have really no hope and I believe I'm going to be here for the rest of my life. Well, Vladimir Putin called Biden's comments about him rude, but strangely enough, doubled down on previous comments he'd made when he said he hoped President Biden would win November's election. David? James Longman reporting live from Kyiv again tonight. James, thank you. Meantime, back here in the U.S. tonight and to the new fallout that could affect so many women in this country. It comes after that decision declaring frozen embryos are people, 
by Alabama's highest court. Tonight, more Alabama hospitals and clinics have halted IVF, even with women, families in the middle of treatments. Tonight, Vice President Kamala Harris saying this is because of Donald Trump and his picks for the Supreme Court overturning Roe. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze in Alabama tonight. Tonight, President Biden denouncing that controversial Alabama Supreme Court decision that puts women's access to IVF at risk, calling it a direct result of the overturning of Roe v. Wade, saying the disregard for women's ability to make these decisions for themselves and their families is outrageous and unacceptable. On the campaign trail in Michigan, Vice President Kamala Harris saying we're at this point because of President Trump appointing Supreme Court justices who would overturn Roe. And he did it. And that's what got us to this point today. And just days after the state Supreme Court's ruling, almost half of Alabama's fertility clinics are pausing IVF treatments. Dr. Beth Malizia at Alabama Fertility Clinic describing the heart-wrenching calls to patients. We've got patients who are already with this sort of extreme stress, and then you put this decision that's coming out of nowhere um, on top of that, and it's, yeah, it's awful. 238,000 families in the U.S. undergo IVF every year to try to become pregnant. Each cycle averages $12,000. How does someone else get to dictate what I say, what I, the, what I want for my family? Tori Beasley conceived her daughter by IVF. She's midway through another cycle, only to learn today her embryo transfer appointment, scheduled for March 4th, was canceled. You stay in a state of hope, I guess, just being hopeful. Are you hopeful today? Still hopeful. That's all I have right now. Undergoing IVF is a deeply personal decision. We've been speaking to so many families here in the middle of this process. They are angry and confused in the middle of an already stressful process. Some have spent their life savings and what they think, David, could be the only option for them to have a child. David. As you said, deeply personal for millions of families. Elizabeth, thank you. We turn now to the southern border tonight after Republicans killed that bipartisan border security deal. President Biden tonight signaling he will take action on his own on the southern border. Matt Gutman reporting from the border tonight. Tonight, just two weeks after Republicans torpedoed that landmark bipartisan deal on the border, President Biden now weighing taking executive action to stem the flow of migrants at the southern border. For months, he'd claimed that without Congress, he was out of options. Not all I can do. Give me the power. But now ABC News is learning one proposal the White House is considering cracking down on migrants who cross between official ports of entry. They comprise the bulk of those crossing in recent years, like the families limping into this camp near the Mexican border in Hacumba Hot Springs, California. Under this potential executive order, they could be barred from seeking asylum. The border wall extends several miles behind me in that direction, but it ends right here at these boulders. And it's right here where for several months, hundreds of migrants would cross a day. And out of concern of a humanitarian disaster here, Mexican authorities built this encampment with food and water but it had an unintended consequence. People stopped coming here. Last month, migrant apprehensions at the southern border totaling just half of December's record high. Sam Schultz is a volunteer here in Hakumba Hot Springs. You know, if President Biden does pass this executive order, essentially changing the way asylum is done, what do you think the effect will be here? If that happens, yeah, we'll get a flood for a while, and then it'll probably shut down, but who knows? Who knows? David, it's images of ragtag camps like this that is putting pressure on President Biden to act on the border. And the White House telling us tonight that the restrictions on asylum are just one of a range of possible executive actions they could take. And even if this does come together, they say it could take months to finalize. David. Of course, a major issue this election year. Matt Gutman. Matt, thank you. Next tonight, a U.S. sailor from Tennessee has been charged with espionage tonight, accused of passing classified documents to a foreign national at least eight times. Pierre Thomas with what we know so far. Tonight, a Navy sailor who worked in a division providing support to one of the nation's most advanced missile systems has been charged with espionage. Navy Chief Petty Officer Bryce Predicini, who was stationed aboard the USS Higgins, is accused of repeatedly sharing classified information relating to the national defense to a citizen and employee of a foreign government. According to the military charges, Petticini shared classified material on at least eight occasions while he was stationed at a naval base in Hampton Roads, Virginia, and also while on duty in Japan. 
So far, the military is refusing to name the country or provide specifics on the classified information that was allegedly compromised. But Pettuccini operated the Aegis Combat System, a sophisticated radar system that tracks incoming missiles so they can be shot down. Among the classified material he allegedly provided to a foreign agent, images of a SIPR computer screen, which allows access to sensitive top secret military material. Tonight, Navy officials gave us the following statement saying they take all incidents of this nature very seriously and they remain vigilant for other potential breaches. David. And we know you'll continue to follow it, Pierre. Thank you. Now to the sad news tonight involving well-known TV host Wendy Williams, diagnosed with the same condition affecting actor Bruce Willis. So what kind of dementia is this and what her family told our Deborah Roberts? Just days before the release of a new docuseries chronicling her personal struggles, former talk show host Wendy Williams revealing a new battle. A care team for the 59-year-old saying she was diagnosed with progressive aphasia and frontotemporal dementia, adding the conditions have presented significant hurdles in Wendy's life. It's the same diagnosis Bruce Willis revealed last year. Here's Wendy! For years, Williams reigned supreme on her gossipy talk show. But in 2017, she collapsed on set, <laughs> sparking concerns for her health. The TV host had been open about her medical issues and battles with substance abuse. But in the end, her show was canceled. Williams was hoping a new Lifetime documentary, Where is Wendy Williams, would lead to a return to TV. Instead, cameras captured a heartbreaking decline with excessive drinking, erratic behavior. Go! Drive! I have no idea where we are. And bouts of incoherence. Just yesterday, I sat down with Williams' niece, Alex Finney, an anchor at our Miami affiliate WPLG, to talk about the documentary. Some people are going to look at this and say, this is exploitation. She's being exploited. Mm -hmm. How could they do this? Right. My aunt is the executive producer of this documentary. And she said, now is the perfect time because I want to take ownership of my story. Family members say they had noticed cognitive decline in Williams, but at the time, there was no official diagnosis. During this filming, at what point did you know something was seriously wrong? Oh, right off the bat. When I saw her, she didn't have to say one thing. I knew that every cylinder is not firing the way it should. Williams is under the care of a court-ordered guardian following questions about the management of her finances. Her family says while they're relieved to hear that she seems to be responding well to treatment, they're frustrated that they haven't been allowed to see her in nearly a year. David? Deborah Roberts tonight. Deb, thank you. When we come back here, the new storm moving into the northeast tonight and then what's coming right behind it. And the dramatic images tonight, the rescue from a high-rise apartment fire, the baby being carried down that ladder in a moment. Tonight here, the dramatic rescues from a 14-story apartment building fire in Chicago. At least seven people were hurt, including an infant in critical condition. One person seen carrying a baby through a smoke-filled window, climbing down a ladder, and then handing the baby to a firefighter. Fire crews also saving people hanging from windows. Authorities say everyone is expected to survive. When we come back here tonight, the new storm moving into the northeast tonight, snow and rain and what's coming right behind it. And what we've just learned about this landing on the moon tonight, Geo is standing by with more. Tonight we are tracking snow and rain from Kentucky right up to the northeast, up to two inches of snow possible in upstate New York and parts of New England. Rain from Washington, D.C. to New York City to Boston. Then behind it, much of the country about to see temperatures in 50s, 60s, even the 70s this weekend right into next week. When we come back here tonight, what we just learned from Geo on this landing moments ago on the moon. ABC World News Tonight with David Muir, sponsored by Vivgard and Vivgard Hytrulo. Finally tonight here, the U.S. landing on the moon for the first time in more than 50 years just a short time ago. The unmanned lander already sending data back. Gio Benitez covering this. What have you learned, Gio? Well, David, it's just incredible. In the final two hours before this landing, we've learned that the main landing system actually failed, and they actually had to create right here on Earth a whole new software and send that to Odie there by the moon. And that made that successful landing incredible, David. Made all the difference. It was supposed to land at 624, and it did just about that. You'll have more on this tomorrow. Thank you, Gio, and thank you for watching at home. Good night.
Thank you for making World News Tonight with David Muir, America's most watched newscast.